I mean, you were eating yes. ungodly amounts of yes, food, sir. man. What goes on behind the scenes stays behind the scenes. Or does it? Here are 15 untold truths about man versus food. Man versus food caused a Food Network feud. And the winner of this food fight is... First hitting the Travel Channel Airways on December 3rd, 2008, the classic show was exactly what the title said, a series pitting host Adam Richman against various types of food challenges. The show was an initial hit, but not everybody in the food TV game was a fan. Didn't, didn't enjoy it, didn't, didn't have a good time. And Longtime Food Network TV personality Alton Brown was an outspoken critic of Man vs. Food's extreme stunts, with comments going as far as to call it disgusting, embarrassing, and wrong. Brown's classic show Good Eats was the third longest-running program on the Food Network, and his take on food centered on the history and knowledge of the culinary arts, alongside the science and technique of cooking using proper equipment. It's no wonder his button-down style didn't take kindly to the spectacle of Man vs. Food. The show also caused a Travel Channel scuffle. So delicious, you know, because each individual element is so good. Although Alton Brown's cutting remarks back in 2010 looked down on Man vs. Food, he wasn't the only celebrity chef to point some angry kitchen knives at the antics of Richmond. Chef Anthony Bourdain's famous series No Reservations aired on the Travel Channel for three of the same years Man vs. Food did. And in 2015, Chef Bourdain pulled no verbal punches, going out of his way to dig into the shock value of the food challenges. Bourdain pointed out that Man vs. Food had a large contingent of fans overseas, but for all the wrong reasons. The show had high ratings in Asia as well as the Middle East, but Bourdain said all the show accomplished was reinforcing negative stereotypes of American life. He said that Man vs. Food would only show the world that Americans are, quote, fat, lazy, slothful, and wasteful. Getting thin caused a thick controversy. You get on the scale and you're a perfectly normal weight and all you see is fat. When Adam Richmond finally hung up his bib and Man vs. Food went on hiatus, Richmond took the next 10 months to go the opposite route and drop some of the excess baggage he'd gained. With a strict diet and regular exercise, he dropped two shirt sizes and went from a double XL to a large by losing 70 pounds in 10 months. Exercise only accounts for 25, I heard, 28% of weight loss. It's all diet. When Adam took to showing off his success on Instagram in the summer of 2015, he included the hashtag Thinspiration. But that turned out to be a bigger mistake than any extra hot chicken wing the host had faced. The hashtag had been linked to encouraging eating disorders, which drew the ire of the internet, which only worsened when Richmond responded to the criticism using a curse word filled rant. Richmond eventually resurfaced when things blew over, and he was back hosting two more shows that same year. The host handoff got heated. I ordered my hot sauce an hour ago. After Richmond's departure, Man vs. Food was finally rebooted when the baton was passed to new host Casey Webb in 2017. And although the series' new face was quite qualified for the position, he wasn't exactly well-liked. Webb started in the food business at the tender age of 15 and brought extensive experience as a bartender, kitchen hand, and restaurant manager to the position. Casey also had voiceover and acting experience that made him a fit for television, and Travel Channel loved his audition. Although the network brass thought it was a home run, the Man vs. Food fans did not. Petitions and vitriol popped up online, demanding Richmond's return and causing plenty of social media stir. Adam Richmond himself weighed in with an Instagram comment, citing that Webb wasn't so much a replacement as he was, quote, just someone driving a stolen car. In the end, Webb has proven his popularity as his version of Man vs. Food has now run longer than Richmond's. The world is not your oyster. 
It's about dozen 11, and I had to eat 15 dozen. Just even thinking about it makes me feel some kind of way. While Richmond eventually had enough of the series, he still considered himself a lover of food from time to time, except for one dish in particular. Of all the crazy dishes and massive portions Adam had to eat, he has stated that there's only one thing that turned him off a single food forever. In the 10th episode of the show's first season, Adam visited New Orleans for a seafood showdown at the city's famous Acme Oyster House. Because the battle of man versus mollusk is about to begin. Of course, the challenge indeed involved the restaurant's famous oysters and the task of joining the 15 Dozen Club. Yes, a whole 180 oysters in one sitting. Adam completed the challenge successfully, but it was finally more than he could handle. The host stated in a 2015 interview that the whole experience just turned him off and that he'd stayed so far away from oysters to have eaten less than 12 of the half-shell delicacy over the next six years that followed. Followed. New to our channel? Then become an official Babble Topper by hitting that subscribe button. Thanks! Man vs. The Gigantic So absolutely huge! Many of Richmond's food challenges centered around size and quantity, and one of his early shows helped him develop important strategies for the wars to come. In the show's fourth episode, Adam was challenged with a sandwich from a deli in Columbus, Ohio that clocked in at two and a half pounds. It was loaded with roast beef, Virginia ham, and smoked turkey, and topped with two kinds of cheese, and was the show's first win for Man in the Man vs. Food TV challenges. Richmond stated afterward that this early challenge helped him build knowledge and strategies for challenges of immense size. This included sectioning off the full challenge into smaller portions for visual encouragement, and pre-gaming by alternating his beverages between soda water and bottled water to keep his stomach stretched out for the incoming feast. The host also learned his lesson about how the quantity challenges typically included starches that fill the consumer up faster so that they can't finish the whole thing. So when someone tells you that the size of the challenge matters, remind them it's actually the starch. Man versus the Spicy Actually, a flavor, or is it like your head turns electric? It like yeah, it tastes like burning. The series tended to alternate between quantity challenges and heat challenges, swapping size for spice to keep Adam on his toes. The 15th episode of the series presented what would stand as the worst of the heated hurdles when Richmond attempted the Hellfire Wings challenge in San Jose, California. Can't taste nothing unless you got that burn on there. The secret to the hellish heat was a sauce that included powdered cayenne pepper and six ounces of habanero powder that brought the whole thing to a rating of almost three million units on the Scoville heat scale. While Richmond managed to eat all 12 of the wings, the aftermath was much worse. The host called the challenge the worst physical pain he's ever encountered, and after recovering, remarked that those last five minutes almost killed him. Sick? but not sick of it. This could be my last day. You have a common cold. Season 1 provided several milestones for Man vs. Food, as it was also the scene of Richmond's most difficult challenge, although it wasn't really due to the food. Episode 16 saw Adam take on a breakfast burrito in Denver, Colorado, and it was a pretty standard massive meal for the show. The monster breakfast burrito weighed in at 7 pounds and was once voted the fattiest food in all of Colorado. But the food was less of a problem than Richmond's physical state that day, when he later disclosed that he'd pushed through filming the episode despite being extremely ill. Adam was simultaneously battling a sinus infection and bronchitis infection and had a 101 degree fever and said that's what made the challenge so hard to complete. Seems like the fresh Rocky Mountain air didn't do him any favors. Fire in the Hole Fire in the Hole! Season 2 brought on what might be Richmond's most controversial challenge. It wasn't about the quantity and packed a much worse punch. 
At a restaurant in Sarasota, Florida, Richmond faced the fire in your hole challenge, which consisted of only 10 hot wings to be eaten in 20 minutes. According to the restaurant, only about 10% of challengers ever passed the test due to the insane heat of the sauce. The concoction contains habanero peppers, cayenne pepper, chili powder, red pepper flakes, and one key ingredient, a splash of ghost chili extract. And then all of a sudden it felt like I had gotten kicked in the stomach from the inside. However, there was deception afoot. When Richmond hit the scene, the management was afraid he'd pass the challenge and were caught on film adding an entire bottle of ghost chili extract to Adam's serving. The host barely powered through two wings and was later furious at the kitchen's sneaky tactics. Not cool. Not cool at all. North to Alaska. Alaska, a place where you can't be too fat or too drunk. Out of the 59 different challenges that were taken on during Richmond's four seasons as host, some used questionable tactics, had too much starch, or caught him on a bad day. Some even put him in serious pain. But only one has stood out on the positive side as the host's favorite of them all, the Kodiak Arrest Challenge in Alaska. Adam posted to Reddit during an AMA that it was his all-time favorite challenge because the quantity also had amazing quality. The locally sourced meal included a 14-inch link of reindeer sausage, seven nuggets of crab, three pounds of Alaska king crab, and a dessert of wild berry crisp with ice cream. Although Richmond has stated that every challenge left him with some level of post-binge discomfort, this one was decidedly worth it. Man versus the gym. And it was just really like stopping, being a little calorie conscious, getting a little more active. As it's pretty easy to imagine, making a living traveling the nation to scarf down borderline dangerous amounts of overcalorific food wasn't all fun and games. Before he even began filming his first episodes, Richmond researched what he was getting into and consulted a team of doctors and specialists to try and find a good way to do something that's essentially bad for you. 10,000 steps a day. During the show's second season, Adam interviewed with ESPN and stated his idea of seeing specialists ahead of time was to do as much healthy prep as possible and be in good shape at the start, instead of having to drag himself back into shape after doing any damage. While filming, Adam said he worked out regularly twice a day, and on challenge days, he'd work out the night before and first thing in the morning before the challenge. That's one way to work up an appetite. Adam was an amateur. Well, you're right, Vice President Lewis. I am an amateur. Before his start on the show, Richmond had no formal training or preparation in the world of competitive eating. In fact, he didn't even have to chow down during the six rounds of auditions that he passed to host the show. Travel Channel was simply interested in an average Joe who could talk about food and decided he could figure the actual eating part out along the way. While world-famous competitive eaters like hot dog champ Joey Chestnut don't look like average Joes, it's because their preparation for contests is any but average. Adam took tips from the pros and once said that his warm-up regimen for challenges was lots of exercise, like leg and back workouts in particular. He also worked on treadmill sprints and some jump rope before he worked in all those extra calories. Man versus proper table manners. You probably already know that you're not supposed to talk with your mouth full of food. While Richmond didn't have any proper competitive eating training, he also didn't have any formal training for the show's second most important skill, talking with his mouth full. While the climax of episodes would see Adam cramming his mouth full of massive amounts of grub, he also needed to articulate his experience to the audience with the borderline play-by-play -play of the action. What has two thumbs and just finish off the chicken parm and the garlic bread? Richmond went through a process of trial and error after publicly noting that no one really teaches you to eat on camera. Eventually, he found a chipmunk-style sweet spot in his right cheek where he could pack his food and still speak coherently, once confidently telling the Chicago Tribune he can essentially recite the Declaration of Independence as long as he keeps his food in his cheek. And how many times were you told as a kid not to talk with your mouth full? Man versus starvation. Um, I would go to my doctor and I would get uh, 
he actually gave me like cleanses that he approved of and while Richmond's mouth was packed with proteins during challenge tapings, you can bet it was completely empty for long stretches beforehand. One of his biggest strategies was fasting for the entire day before and the day of a challenge, preferring to enter battle with an empty stomach. He once noted that challenges were basically impossible otherwise, stating that if he ate anything at all the day before, it would be a major obstacle going against him when it comes to the big challenges. Man versus the end of the road and I'm gonna tap out. While popularity of the series never waned, it wasn't the travel channel or declining ratings that dictated the end of the original four-season Adam Richman run. In fact, it was Adam Richman himself who made the call to leave the show. And despite the health challenges and swirling rumors related to these health issues, the host was adamant that it wasn't the reason for exiting the show. Adam's simple explanation was that the shock value diminishes over time, and it was best for the series to come to an end before it became repetitive. In the end, it was neither man nor food that won, but it made for some exciting television. Tune in to more great videos. Just tap or click. First time here? Then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.